Did you know that everyday words like hurricane, hammock, and canoe came from Arawak, the Taino people's language? Colonization and slavery inflicted many horrors on world history. One of those tragedies is what happened to the Taino people. They were an indigenous tribe who lived across the Caribbean, stretching from islands like Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Haiti. The Taino people were the first indigenous people to welcome Christopher Columbus. Their hospitality directly led to their enslavement and deaths. Columbus landed in 1492. By 1550, Spanish records state that no Taino people were left. Despite their cruel treatment, the Taino people have impacted our modern world, and their story reminds us that all cultures are important and worthy of respect. Who were the Taino people? The Taino people were a large, well-organized indigenous tribe who lived in the Caribbean. Historians believe they came from the Arawak tribes that lived in Venezuela, but they began spreading to the Caribbean around 400 BCE. There were other tribes already in the area, but the Arawak people mingled with them, eventually forming the Taino tribe, the largest tribe in the Caribbean. The tribe was sophisticated, but they consisted of many communities across multiple islands that were largely self-sufficient. Their villages ranged dramatically. Some consisted of just a few families, and others included over 3,000 people. But they were all well-organized with a complex social structure. They had three basic social classes, nobility, commoners, and enslaved people. And each community had a chief related to the previous leader, usually matrilineally. The Taino people structured their family trees along the maternal lines, hence the inheritance of things and titles came from the mother. Both men and women could be the chief and there were sub-chiefs to support the government. However, the villages were not isolated. They built boats, some of which were intended to journey across the ocean, and they appeared to have traveled. Their large canoes helped them become excellent navigators and fishers, but they also used their boats for water games. Most people lived in a house called the Bojillo. These were small homes built with local materials like palm leaves and vines to make them weather-resistant and each family had a garden plot next to their home where they grew their crops. The Taino people relied on their crops to provide sustenance, growing food like sweet potatoes, beans, yucca, and maize. The terrains of the islands are still highly diverse, so to get enough land for farming, the people would burn or scrub part of the forest. They gathered all the ash and soil into areas that were easy to tend and water to create successful farming plots. However, the Taino people did not keep animals as Western farmers did. The only animal they kept were dogs, although they sometimes used parrots as decoys while hunting. They hunted lizards, birds, and other small animals on land and collected fish and shellfish from the sea to supplement their diets. The Tainos never developed a written language, but they incorporated many other things into their society to create a vibrant culture. They developed a complex religious system centered around worshipping spirits and traditional gods. They had statues carved out of rocks to represent the spirits, some of which are still around today. There were also caves where people would visit to learn of the future and pray, and today, the walls of these caves are covered with the ancient drawings that the Tainos left behind. Leaders would also use cohoba powder to help them make essential leadership decisions, such as judging disputes or going to war. Cohoba was a hallucinogen that caused the user to see strange visions, such as moving houses or people walking backward. They believed the ritual allowed political and spiritual leaders to access the spirit world. The people also beautifully decorated pottery, carved images out of wood or stone, and wove with dyed fabric. However, their clothing was simple. Men had loincloths and women had aprons. Despite the Spanish belief that the New World was overflowing with gold, the Taino people's jewelry was not always made of gold, though some earrings, necklaces, and nose rings were. The Taino people also had access to rubber, which they used to create balls for a game called Batu. They played it on a rectangular court, and players had to hit the rubber ball with the shoulders, elbows, hips, or head. This game is still played today in places like Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and it fascinated explorers when they first saw it. The Taino culture was thriving and grew steadily into the late 15th century. They may have grown even more if the Spanish had not arrived in 1492. Scholars believe there were 1 to 3 million Taino people throughout the Caribbean when Columbus arrived looking for India. He did not find India. Instead, he brought a great time of tribulation to the people who had made the Caribbean their home for hundreds of years. What happened to the Taino people? 
When Christopher Columbus first sighted land in 1492, he thought he had found India, with whom the Europeans were eager to establish a better trade route. The Taino people were the first to welcome Columbus and his ships to the Caribbean, and they were quick to show their generous hospitality to the strangers. However, instead of establishing a respectful and mutually beneficial trade relationship, their generosity had the opposite effect. Columbus quickly turned his thoughts from establishing good relations for trade to how he and the rest of Europe could exploit these people. The Taino people were not immune to war. They had conflicts with the Carib, who were taking over the eastern islands. The Carib people were fiercer than the Taino people. They used poison arrows and typically raided villages for victims for their possible cannibalism practices and for women to enslave. The Taino people had weapons of their own, such as pepper gas, but their weapons and war strategies could not stand up to the Spaniards and their guns. The Spanish wanted the Taino people to pay gold, convert to Christianity, and work to supply the Spanish with food. However, this was not an equal working relationship. Columbus established La Isabella as the first American colony and then quickly began enslaving the native people. The Spaniards took men from the villages and made them work in the mines for gold and on the plantations. The work was hard and the subjugation was cruel. All the native leaders either had to submit to Spanish rule or were killed. Of course, some of them tried to rebel. The most famous rebellion occurred in 1511 when the Tainos and Caribs worked together, but even this partnership wasn't enough. Some Taino people eventually committed suicide to escape enslavement, but as the number of free people fell drastically, the traditional Taino crops failed. They could not plant and tend them, so the people began to starve. Worse still, the Europeans brought diseases like measles and smallpox against which the Taino people had no immunity. Thousands died from illness. By 1550, around 90% of the Taino people had died from disease, enslavement, and fighting against the Spanish. Considering that historians believe there were between 1 and 3 million Taino people before the Spanish arrived, that means that up to 2.7 million Taino people died in about 50 years. The majority of them perished from exposure to European illnesses. The sudden and extreme loss of life had two effects. First, it caused the Spaniards to bring enslaved Africans to replace the indigenous people, entrenching the practice of African slave labor in the Americas. The few Taino people still alive began intermarrying with the Africans and the Spanish. At least 40% of the colonizers had taken native wives by 1514. Second, the Taino people lost much of their culture and heritage in a few short years. Christianity supplanted their religious traditions, and their customs were discouraged. The few Taino people who remained taught the Africans some of their practices, creating a more Creole-like culture on islands that the Taino people had once dominated. It seemed like the Taino people were gone, erased by the harshness of colonization. The few who survived disappeared into the growing number of outside forces who eventually turned the islands into their own home. By the 1550s, the Spanish in the Caribbean reported that there were no native people left, and for years, historians believed the Taino people to be lost to colonization. It appeared that all that was left were the fragments of native culture that had been incorporated into the Spanish culture such as the Taino names of places and specialty words like hurricane and hammock. Are there any Taino people left today? For many years, historians thought the Taino people and culture were destroyed in the years after Columbus first made history and started the infamous pattern of colonization in the Americas. However, genetic studies in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s revealed that the Taino people were not as lost to the annals of history as experts had first believed. Some isolated villages have large percentages of people with Taino genetics, and others carry on the Taino legacy outside these small villages. In the Dominican Republic, 15 to 18 percent of Dominicans sampled had Taino genetic markers. In Puerto Rico, a study in 2003 found that about 61 percent of the people tested had pieces of Taino DNA, indicating that the Taino influence is still part of the makeup of the Caribbean. It might seem incredible that even some of the Taino people survived the brutality of early colonization, mainly because about 90% of the population died in a few short years. However, the 10% that survived were determined to maintain their cultural identity. Some intermarried with the Africans and Spanish, but some escaped to remote corners where colonization never reached and established small villages that still use traditional methods to farm, build, and heal today, passed on from parent to child.
Some modern indigenous people still keep the traditional gardens and religion. They believe everything has a spirit, so they offer prayers to trees, the sun, the moon, and other spirits. They continue to treat plants with respect, believing they give sustenance and healing and expect something in return. Some of the older native people are still illiterate and have learned and taught their traditions in oral society much like the one that Christopher Columbus first encountered over 500 years ago. Today, several groups across the Caribbean and into Florida identify as Taino and are actively working to revive the Taino culture, language, and traditions. They created an organization called the United Confederation of Taino People in 1998. However, they have not been acknowledged by any governments or granted the right to rule themselves. Despite the long struggle ahead, the Taino people today are proud of their culture. Some are pushing to increase indigenous education in schools to balance the traditional Eurocentric history lessons. Others focus on teaching people themselves, concentrating on instructing children in Arawak, the language of the Taino people. Although discussion of Taino representation can spark controversy in some countries in the Caribbean, the activists maintain that they just want a voice after being silenced for so long. More and more people are identifying as Taino, and although some scholars are skeptical, others have been finding references to the indigenous people of the Caribbean beyond the Spanish records that state the Taino people were gone. These native people built their own city in Cuba in 1701, called Higuani. They also fought in modern wars and helped with Cuban independence. Long before historians arrived in the 1950s looking for genetic evidence of the Taino people, they were already there and are still part of Caribbean culture today if you keep your eyes open to the wonder and tenacity of humankind. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Taino, check out our book, History of Cuba, a captivating guide to Cuban history starting from Christopher Columbus's arrival to Fidel Castro. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.